features on the Sustainable Development Goals of Agenda 2030. The UK Government have drawn up plans to meet net zero carbon emissions by 2050 under the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of Agenda 2030, a strategy to reach a 68% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. West Suffolk, having already joined UK's 100 councils to reach net zero emissions, Suffolk, Norfolk, Essex and Cambridge are also on that list, with Ipswich becoming the UK's first 15 minute town whereby all your amenities are in one place within 15 minutes walking distance, meaning less cars on the road with an emphasis on walking and cycling to gain access to those closely placed amenities. Having visited Oxford recently, those plans to turn the city into one of those 15 minute cities, you can already see the effects it is having on its residents, with a restriction on travel to and from work, with strategically placed bollards stopping access to certain roads and number plate recognition cameras, fining residents up to £70 for travelling through zonal areas. Local authorities have drawn up plans to restrict the ability of drivers the use of public roads for getting across the city that will affect when, where and what type of car people can drive without incurring fees. The most significant programme that concerns Oxford and all of those towns and cities that we incorporate these restrictions is considering issuing local residents with permits to make direct trips for up to 100 days a year across different towns and cities with fines being received. This is ultimately a control on free movement, meaning holidays abroad would be restricted, restrictions on visits to family living out of town. This would also affect local businesses and ultimately be a push on our fundamental rights as free sovereign human beings to move free. A dictatorship from the ruling class who ignore their very own advice and choose to do just the opposite flying their private jets halfway across the world and using the roads to travel with their huge entourages of petrol and diesel guzzling vehicles. These political puppets, selected by none other than Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, a criminal organisation run by madmen and psychopaths, who for the past three years have had us in unnecessary lockdowns, closed away from family connection and pushed, coerced and misled to take an unsafe, large and untested experimental drug. For some more harm than good, with Matt Hancock insistently pushing and persuading the British public into an experimental trial with no informed consent and pushing the elderly onto end of life drugs and Dazlan, these same parasites now wish to use climate change and net zero as new ways in which to lock us down. As a very resident, I want to know that my children's freedoms and futures are protected by the councillors present, who are here to serve us, the people, and keep our best interests at heart. As you are working on behalf of us, the very Stenders residents, can you give us your assurance that you will put a stop to any future implications being pushed upon our town and its residents? We will oppose, resist and withstand any future control on our lives and our freedoms and we have never gave our consent to the Agenda 2030 and we will resist, defy and we will not comply. I have to say that I know very little about the 20 minute neighbourhoods, but I know a little bit more having read this document. And I would recommend anybody to get hold of it. It's by the Town and County Planning Association. Councillor Trump, could you please get closer to the Yes, okay. okay. So, if you haven't read it, get hold of this document. West Suffolk Council is proud of the commitment we've made to addressing the very real challenge of climate change something that's in even sharper focus now given yesterday's report released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that's IPCC, the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change. That commitment is very transparent through our declaration of a climate emergency, the production of an action plan, and the annual monitoring of the plan and our environmental performance that's reported to Cabinet with the papers being published on our website. The action plan does indeed state the need to address travel and transport emissions through council activity, through activities such as moving to alternative fuels, route optimisation for basic vehicles, and installing more electric vehicle charging points. But let me be clear, we're only looking at the scope one, two, and three emissions as they pertain to this council. This council does not propose evaluating or roaming out the 20 minute neighbourhoods. Moreover, West Suffolk Council is also a partner in the Suffolk-wide Suffolk Climate Emergency Plan. And again, that plan recognises the need to address transport emissions. It's publicly available on the Green Suffolk website, and again, 
transparent in its objectives and actions. That plan states that transport accounted for over 35% of Suffolk's CO2 emissions in 2018. And tackling this means fossil fuel vehicles need to be removed from our roads. The focus will predominantly be on promoting electric vehicles until other emission fuel, emission-free fuels are available, but this does not mean replacing all vehicles. Suffolk is looking to reduce transport demand and encourage a shift to less carbon-intensive modes, such as walking, cycling, and public transport. As a rural uh, county, this is going to be very challenging, but again, our state, we have no plans for 20-minute neighbourhoods. I would now like to move on with the speaker, our second speaker, Robert Hayes. Robert, you have a question or statement? statement, um, please. Okay. Um, the statement is Okay. Okay. Um, well, my question initially was. Um, what is your understanding of the origins of Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals? And this statement is basically around the fact that this is not a local development plan. What we are seeing is very, very slowly rolled out across the world as part of an orchestrated and deliberate control mechanism. This, in my opinion, was a planned economic collapse, ultimately leading to digital ID and, and central bank digital currency. The idea around the control mechanism was initially put forward by a Masonic think tank formed by David Rockefeller in 1968 in Italy. It was known as the Club of Rome. The clan consisted of a collection of politicians, bureaucrats, government officials and big business. Names such as Rothschild and Soros, basically a club for the Western elites. Their aim was to steer public opinion over the next 50 years a quote from the Council of the Club of Rome. The need for enemies seems to be a common historical factor. States have striven to overcome domestic failure and internal contradictions by designating extreme enemies. The scapegoat practice is as old as mankind itself. When things become too difficult at home, divert attention by adventure abroad. Bring the divided nation together to face an outside enemy, and this is in being either a real one or else one invented for the purpose. A common enemy of humanity is man. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, now called climate change, water shortages, shortages famine and the like would fit the bill. In their totality and in their interactions, these phenomena do constitute a common threat which demands the solidarity of all people. And this was written in the early 1970s. Over the next 20 years, the development of the climate hoax progressed. In 1992, at the Rio Earth Summit, under the UN umbrella, or as my mother-in-law used to call them, the Thieves Kitchen, Agenda 21 was rolled out. The plan was to set in motion a perpetual agenda of limitless disaster scenarios and catastrophic events. Flood, drought, global warming, global cooling, sea level rise or fall, or the ozone layer, and so on and so on. In my time on Earth so far, I should have drowned in a desert with temperatures so hot I could have been frozen to death. <laughs> Our Prime Minister of the time, John Major, signed us up without any public consultation, no doubt having his hands tied by the likes of George Soros. This wonderful character once said, what do I care for humanity? I am here to make money. In 1996, our government released a document entitled Agenda 21 and the Earth Summit 2, rolled out to all local authorities. It was then kept quietly under wraps until 2004 when Boris Johnson got his grubby little mitts on it and rolled it out again as a C40 Cities initiative. This involves 40 mayors across the world and our one is Sadiq Khan. So here we are now seeing the rollout of 15 minute cities or 20 minute zones, all to make life easier for us plebeians. In this wonderful trial, sorry, if this wonderful trial being imposed on the public in cities such as Oxford and Canterbury are so good, why is it then that the infrastructure and amenities 
that will make life so accessible for our not yet in place. And the first thing implemented was road closures, AMPR cameras, number plate recognition, and fines for travelling through the wrong zone at the wrong time in the wrong place unless you had gained permission or bought a permit. All of this is for your own good when businesses in those areas are failing. There is a growing mindset of dissent developing as it is becoming more apparent to the previously unsuspecting population that they have been lied to over the last three years. People are waking up to this dark and nefarious agenda. Subsequently, Birmingham Council have just thrown out 50,000 fines because the public refused to pay. My last statement is to you, the councillors at town and county level, MPs and politicians. A reminder that you work for us, you are public servants, who are only in the positions you are by the consent of the government. We, the people, do not consent to the restrictions that Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030 have in store for us. And it would be worth noting that throughout history, once the draconian and totalitarian regimes have been implemented, those in authority will soon, soon be disposed of. The seat at the table and the ride on the gravy train soon comes to an end. Hancock and Fauci have already been thrown under the bus. I hope this has been enough of a shot across the bow, but don't trust me. Please go and research yourselves, because this will impact you and your families as well. Your statement. Now, this is a statement um, I'm not sure if there's any points that you'd like to respond to, Councillor Drummond. Yeah. I have a prepared reply, um, so I'll take that as a question. Um, I'm sure that many of us who've been involved in public service over the years will be aware of the different policy approaches that have been used to address um, the environmental challenge. Okay? So the reference Mr. Sayers has made relate to international approaches the United Nations moving from Agenda 21, coming from the Earth Summit in Rio back in the early 1990s, to current Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, effectively an international call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. And of course, we have our own policies in the UK that the government has put in place, and these direct the work at district level. So that's where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor John. We move on to the third speaker, uh, Mr. Ian Smith. Thank you. Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by saying I was impressed with the environmentally friendly Milton Hall Hub with its green credentials, which I visited for the first time a couple of weeks ago. It we was shown around by an understandably Proud strategic director. Thank you, Alex. Okay, this is the question which I uh, put forward yesterday. As a resident of Berry Town, it concerns me somewhat to find out that West Suffolk Council, along with Suffolk County Council, Norfolk and Cambridge Councils, have all signed up to the UK 100 organisation, whose members have, and I quote, pledged to deliver a net zero future. As part of that pledge towards net zero, it begs the question, does the council and its members support the implementation of restrictive tra travel measures for our town of residents or anywhere in Suffolk, for example, Ipswich? What do I mean by restrictive travel measures? an LTN, low travel, low traffic neighbourhood, or a 15 minute city, or a 20 minute neighbourhood. Call it what you will. It goes under many names and guises. As we've seen in other towns and cities throughout our country, once the general public gets to hear more about this pledge, it will undoubtedly cause concern, distress, and as a result, opposition will grow. If an LTN or a 20 minute neighborhood is considered and unwisely acted upon and brought to fruition, this will affect everyone from individuals 
abled and disabled, families and businesses. I hope that all concerns all, all councils present at this meeting here tonight share these concerns. Please do not support this government sponsored proposal for LTNs. I believe many behind me here tonight share these concerns. Thank you for listening to our concerns. Thank you for your statement. Yes. Um, as this is directed towards the same portfolio, I will ask Councillor John to respond, please. Thank you, Chair. So I hope my answer to Mr. Leeds has addressed your concerns about 20 journalists. Can I make a point of order, please? No, could you mention to the public, please? Sit down, please. Is this the only gentleman who's got a point of view on the council? Sir, I am the cabinet member for uh, uh, the Secretary and the Environment. Will you please sit down so you're disrupting the meeting? I'll start again. Thank you. Councillor Drummond. I hope my answer to Mr Leeds has addressed your concern around 20 minute neighbourhoods and restrictive measures and that West Suffolk do not have any plans to implement them. Round of applause, please. Yeah. Okay. So your expressed concern about our membership of UK 100. We joined this organisation last year to confirm our commitment to net zero and work with other councils. And I am aware that the artist known as Right Said Fred has put some misinformation on Twitter about UK 100. <laughs> I can also confirm that Suffolk County Council, who is the Highways Authority, have set out their vision in their Suffolk Local Transport Plan for 2011 to 2031, and in that vision, there are no 20 minute neighbourhoods proposed. Okay? Thank you. I'm going to move on to our fourth speaker, which is Jeff Meehan, please. Thank you, everybody. It's a two part question, but I'm going to explain my reasons uh, why. Sorry, I'm going to stop you there. Can everybody hear the speaker? Sorry. Can everybody hear me now? Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, the two-part question I'm going to explain what I'm on about is uh, do you know anything about the digital concentration camps and will you be part of it? Now the reason I've stated that it's all to do with the central bank digital currency which uh, Richie Sunak is very big on at the moment and which will undoubtedly, to leave on out, cause problems for the UK uh, and for the country itself. So the reason behind this is in the next two to three years we're finding uh, that cash will disappear because there are lots of um, things going on in the financial situation. So once cash has gone, we're then left with the, the banks will crash, the economy will go down and you'll face uh, future blackouts until they've decided to reset with the central bank digital currency which they forecast is going to go ahead. Now what that is based on, because the, the governments always do this thing with like a problem, reaction, solution, they'll create a problem, they'll cause a reaction and they'll create a solution. Because this crash that's coming is by design and it's vitally important that you understand what I'm about to say now. They will, when everything comes back to life after the blackout, which could last a week, a month, two months, maybe six months, so as a side note I suggest that you do um, stock up on some food and water, ready for this. Whether you think this is not true or not, I suggest you do more research on that point as well. But with the central bank digital currency, what they're going to propose is, um, obviously because cash is gone, a surveillance coin. Among all the other surveillance operations in the world at present, um, with all the cameras that you have around, so a billion in the world at the moment with more coming, um, and your phones are tracked, uh, you've got your doorbell video surveillance thing that that's tracked as well and everything else. But this surveillance coin is going to be linked to a one world bank, which is what they are after a one world government, one world bank. Because all the banks will be gone, so what will happen is this surveillance coin will track your every move where you're going, what you're going to spend your money on, what food you're going to eat. Because the, the, they seem to like this meat free stuff, and grasshoppers. And, and things like that, which they want you to eat. They don't really want you to eat things like red meat, uh, which is very good for you. Um, so in, in doing so, they might put a stop to you eating that, they might put a stop to you eating for the week. But also, your carbon emissions, your footprint, if that's too high, then they might lock you down for a week. 
Basically, this is a tracking device and it goes on a social score, which when the internet was invented, or first come about, I should say, they've been tracking our behavior since it started. Now, if your score is very low, you're not gonna get much in the way of probably the way you eat or being allowed out and things like that. And the fact, if, like a couple of people said here, the speakers about the trials, um, if they were to go ahead, uh, the 20 zones and the lockdowns, uh, sorry, the 50 new cities, we are partially in a lockdown. So this central bank digital currency or the digital concentration camp, as it's known, uh, will be enforced and it will just cause absolute carnage. And if that is what you want to be tied into, because that will be total enslavement at the highest level. And if you don't believe what I am talking about, you've only got to look at China, you've only got to look at Israel, and more recently, that law has been ratified by that awful man in the USA, Joe Biden. So I suggest you look into that, and as my last set part of the question was, will you be part of it? Thank you. say um, thank you for that but do uh, what we all of us are, are, are saying today please do look in and research it okay it's vitally important that you do because this message needs to be put across to everybody uh, there's no good sitting on the fence people thinking oh that's a load of rubbish because it isn't these things are happening and this world is going to change within the next two or three years or so thank you thank you And now we'll move on to our fifth and final speaker, Alex Pascali. Um, my question was, I'd like to know what health and safety risk assessments were done before the installation of 5G towers in Berris and Edmonds, Suffolk, Norfolk, Thank you. and beyond. 5G electromagnetic radiation has been proven to threaten biological life. Where are the where are the environmental impact assessments? Um, before you answer that, if I could just read my statement. I'm just going to bring this a bit closer. 
5G was developed by the military as a weapon that has been widely used in modern warfare. Not only used by them, but the police as well. Directed energy weapons or dunes and scanning radar used to target undesirable individuals with directed energy beams which are designed to maim or kill them and the scanning radar has the capability to see through walls. It is a wireless system and as such emits invisible radiation that causes harmful biological effects to all life on Earth. It is toxic to humans and thousands of studies done show that electromagnetic radiation or EM can cause the following. DNA damage, infertility, immune system suppression, chronic fatigue, memory problems, heart issues, neurological issues, cancer and many more debilitating diseases. Tumours of unknown origin are on the increase. No one is immune to this, including you sitting here today. Your children and your grandchildren. This will affect them as well. 5G towers have been erected everywhere and basically we're living in a microwave oven. Research scientists have also found that there has been a significant increase in the deaths of insects, including bees, which we need to keep us alive. Birds, frogs and other wildlife. Patches of forests have also been decimated, including the Amazon. Those in power will tell you that 5G is safe, that this is not true, they are lying. It has been installed with no proper human safety and health testing, with no environmental impact assessment. Regulators have ignored the scientific evidence of harm, and this is not acceptable. Scientists and doctors have raised concerns about the harmful effects of 5G to governments, industries and international organisations such as the World Health Organisation or the WHO and the United Nations or UN. All appeals have been blatantly ignored with 5G technologies being installed worldwide or to connect us to the Internet of Things. Certain 5G technologies can cause fatigue to materials including buildings and aircraft. Boeing and Airbus have also raised concerns about the potential dangers of 5G on passenger aircraft. Alarm bells are ringing globally, yet still the installation of 5G towers continues and it will lead to catastrophic events. 5G is not sustainable, consumes massive amounts of energy from the electricity grid. One cell tower alone can have the capacity of 600,000 microwaves. This is very scary, as soon to follow will be 6G and then 7G. 5G is uninsurable, hackable, weaponized technology that threatens not only our very existence, but the life on beautiful earth as we know it. You councillors were elected by we the people, therefore we expect you to work in our best interest. If you allow the continued installation of these 5G towers, then you too are complicit in crimes against humanity. This earth is being destroyed bit by bit by greedy globalists who fund these agendas and not by we the people. Sadly, all of us will pay the price for its destruction and let the record show we do not consent. One day when your little son or daughter or granddaughter or grandson says to you, Mummy, Daddy, Grandma, Grandad, why did you let this happen? What will you say when you look into their eyes? Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your question. Um, I, it's a 
not probably a well-known fact that all utility companies in, in this country have statutory powers in terms of planning under the private approval process. So it's not just communications companies, water, electric, gas, all of those. So um, in terms of the process, applicants have to self-certify that the levels of exposure to radiation meet the international recognised guidelines, guidelines as per paragraph 117 of the National Planning Policy Framework. Applications for the electronic communication development, including applications for prior approval under the general domestic development rule, which is a bit of a mouthful, should be supported by the necessary evidence to include, to, to justify the proposal. But this should include the outcome of consultations with organisations with an interest in the proposed development, in particular with the relevant body where a mask is to be installed near a school or a college, for example or within a statutory safeguarding zone surrounding an aerodrome, technical site, or a military exposed storage area. And B, for an addition to an existing mast or base station, a settlement that self-certifies that the cumulative exposure when operational will not exceed the International Commission guidelines on non-ionising radiation. They're lying. Check when those radiation. A new mast or base station evidence that that applicant has explored the possibility of erecting antennas on an existing building, mast, or other structure, and a statement that self certifies that when operational international guidelines will be met. Excuse me. Um, you you got, so, I'm sorry, I'm asking you not to let you speak. Though. You have to um, speak with the electric to speak. Would it be possible for you to send me that information, and I will send you my information from my research with renowned scientists? And just a little thing to add at the end of this: if you take two glasses of water from the tap and you put one in the microwave and you heat it up in the microwave and then you let it go cold, you have two identical plants. You put the tap water in one plant and the microwave cool down water in the other plant. Within two days, that plant is dead. So can you please send me whatever information you've got and I will gladly send you mine. Councillor okay. Roach, do you wish to respond to that? If you... If you send me, if you email me directly with some information, I will get back to you. Right. Right. Thank you, Ellie, for that. Thank you. I would like to thank, this actually includes an item, but I would like to thank our public speakers for contribution to Council tonight with your, with your discussion and your arguments. But it concludes this item. You're welcome to stay in the public gallery to witness the rest of uh, Council should that be that wish. So thank you once again. Thank you very much.